Hello, Deadly Cuts. This is Michelle. You're late, Chantel. I had to walk the long way because Dino said that he was going to shave my head. Oh, for God's sake, Chantel. I heard that he done it to Laura Martin and I had like a bleeding Maltese. Do you know Dino robs half his takings every morning? Protection, he calls it. Which is da, had he used protection? <laughs> <laughs> Angeline Ball, thank you for your time and uh, thank you for Deadly Cuts. That's in cinemas now. Um, I don't know how I even begin to describe Deadly Cuts, Angeline. How do you sum it up? Oh, um, I would say it's a kind of comedy caper with a David versus Goliath, but with a, a kind of a, a moral to the story. Um, yeah, I think it, 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 it's a very dr driving film. It reminds me slightly of Strictly Ballroom. Oh. In that, in that kind of genre. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's a comedy with a little sting in its tail. And not from being around here, as you probably can tell by the accent. Yeah. Uh, um, there's nothing more dub there's nothing more Dublin than Deadly Cuts. As an Aussie uh, watching the film, you can learn a hell of a lot about Dublin by watching Deadly Cuts. Can you not? Oh well, I mean, the thing about it is, you can get all of the bad words in there <laughs> that you need to know, and you get the sense of um, our sense of sarcasm or our sense of wit. Um, and uh, our Dublin wit, basically. And, you and I've only been time. here five or six years, Angelina, and I feel like I've been to the shopping centre where the hairdresser is in Deadly Cuts. I feel like I've been there. Oh, God, yes. I mean, we, we that's the reason why as well we shot in situ is um, we didn't, it, you know, we, we, we didn't film in any sets or anything. Oh, so it's real. It's, it was, it's real hairdressers. Wow. Um, and, uh, and a real butcher did. without giving too much away. Was it a real butcher as well? Uh, <laughs> I'll leave that to the imagination. Right, okay. um, yeah, but we, we, we shot all around uh, Lachlanstown, which is lovely. And the people there were just incredible and helped us out so much. It was quite cold when we shot, we shot in December. Um, but what it does show as well as these little hairdressers, what I'm hoping this film does actually is it brings business back to those kind of little shops instead of people going into town. Um, of course, in this pandemic, they might be afraid to go in with, you know, lots of crowds and everything. So go back to your local salon. You never know what you might find. You'll certainly what hear a story or two, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's, um, it's kind of pushing for all those uh, little local places to give them a bit of business. But what it does so well is capture not only the funny side, but the serious side and like the realism of it. Like what I mean about when it is a, sort of a, a postcard of Dublin, even the hairdressing competition that uh, the, the hairdressers are, are trying to get into and things like that. I know one or two hairdressers in Ireland, in Dublin, and I feel like they've actually competed in a hairdressing competition, not unlike our hair that is oh, in the oh. film. Yeah, totally. I mean, this has been going on for years, these hair competitions. <laughs> and you, know, you, see, you see these, like, when we, you know, the, the art department made up some, like, incredible pieces. And you think, no, surely that's <laughs> not what they... They were absolutely precise in what people put there for their hair pieces. I mean, the more extravagant, the better. Um, and, you know, I... In a funny way, like Rachel Carey, the director writer, had said that she used to work behind a reception in hairdressers many, many years ago. Well, I used to do what 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 happened years ago is that if you become a hair model for these things, or not necessarily, you know, for the competitions, but if you become a model, the rest of the year you can get your hair done in there for nothing. But on the day that you're modeling, you have to go whatever they want for you, you know. So you could come out with cropped orange one side and green the other but you know but the other extremely prestigious and they still go on and you still see like if you go to anybody goes to hairdressers the back of any magazine l'oreal or whatever you see these magazines and you see these hairdressing salons with prizes so they're still very much part of um you know, the, the hairdressing community. It's another world. It really is another world. And Deadly Cuts is really a window into that world in so many ways, not only Dublin, but the hairdressing community. And of course, it's hard to go past. You mentioned Rachel Carey there, the director. Um, uh, I was reading that she sort of uh, 
I guess there's a bit of pressure on you, Angeline, as uh, Imelda in The Commitments those years ago, and I'll bite your bleeding bollocks off and make earrings out of them. And apparently that famous line was an inspiration in a way for what we see in Deadly Cuts and the style of film that it is. Can you explain that? Well, to be honest with you, I think that line is, is, is it's not something people wouldn't have heard, you know, before in Dublin, and especially kind of north side Dublin. Um, I think, you know, that the more kind of, uh, not debased, but the more kind of um, funny, but threatening you can make it, the better the one liner, you know, it kind of, it puts people in their place. So yeah, I think, you know, I think with Roddy Doyle, you know, for me as well, I think the start of all that Dublinisms would have been Sean O'Casey, that great playwright. And then you've got kind of, going forward, you've got Roddy Doyle. And now even going more than that, you've got things like, I mean, the Young Offenders in Cork, and then you've got Deadly Cuts. Um, so I think, to be honest with you, Do Dublin is evolving so much um, that the language is changing as well. And I think the one-liners are, and they're getting a bit, <laughs> some of them I was a bit, really, I'm so glad I don't have to stay there. <laughs> Yeah. But it is a style. Yeah. That's what I mean when Rachel said this, that that line is kind of a basis for what she envisaged Deadly Cuts to kind of be as a, a genre almost of film, yeah. which, it, which it does fit. I mean, you know, some some people have compared Deadly Cuts to The Snapper and things like that. And uh, I, I guess that puts a little bit of a pressure on you guys as a cast and as a film uh, releasing in cinemas and all that sort of stuff. But it really does fit into that. If there was the video store of old, you would see deadly cuts yeah, on the shelf in, in next that, to the that section. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, and you know what's funny is, which is great, I think, I didn't even think about that when I was making it because obviously it's been 30 years since I made commitments and I, I certainly can't pick up that um, Amelda, you know, cloak again. But I think, um, you know, certainly it would in, 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 you know, the wit, the speed, the, the music, um, there is some comparisons or some similarities, but I think, you know, if I'd, if I'd have gone, if I'd have thought about that the minute I read the script, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah, true. If I would have kind of said, oh, this is a kind of a, 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 a you know, an Imelda 30 years later or whatever, and I go, no. So thankfully that didn't even enter into it. I mean, I read Rachel Carey's script and I thought, there's no way I cannot be in this, <laughs> no? Yeah. And I would have actually probably scratched someone's eyes out if they had part over me. But uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, I just went in full hearted. Uh, as, as I said, it's in, almost like situ in a, in a, in a hairdresser's. Um, so we were actually in that moment, you know, every day was, was, you know, and the three girls were just incredible to work with. I was going to get on to that. I mean, the cast itself, you know, you all sort of feel like you, you know, were great mates and belonged yeah. in that hairdressing salon. And now that you tell me it's in situ and all that sort of stuff, I guess that was what contributed to the feeling that you guys were living this movie. Yeah, but, you know, I hadn't met the girls before and um, they kind of knew each other from being around Dublin and I haven't lived in Dublin for a long time. And um, sadly, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they kind of knew each other. So it was kind of up to me to slot in. And I think, to be honest with you, there, there was no bad eggs in, in the film, you know, and I think if anybody came in with a kind of preconceived idea of themselves or... Um, were expecting to be expected to be treated differently and all that. I don't think it would have, it would, you know, certainly wouldn't be the film that it is. I think the fact that we were all on the same uh, page and all wanted one, you know, we're all going in the same direction. And, you know, the girls, God, we laughed so much. I mean, there's <laughs> outtakes. Yeah. There is, you know, we just had so much fun. <laughs> and then we'd say, oh God, God, we have to stop now. Okay, okay, say <laughs> one. You know? Yeah. So I think uh, that really comes across. And okay, it's got its comparisons with the commitments, the snapper, all of that. But I think the main uh, similarity is that when somebody has a good time on a film that shows, it comes out of the screen. 
No, and there's the girl that's... power on this side. You know, the, 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 the female focus in this one can't go unnoticed, Angeline. You're yeah. all fantastic females. And that's probably a little bit more of a step ahead than the commitments and the snapper and all of that. Go oh, the girls, definitely. I say. Go the girls. Definitely. And, you know, don't forget that, as I say, it takes like a village to make a film. It's not just the cast that you see when you go to the cinema on the screen. You know, you've got the DOPs, you've got designers, you've got everybody someone turning on the lights to someone turning them off at night, the security that, you know, mines the place overnight. So, you know, that takes a, a huge concentrated effort, but the majority of it, what you see in terms of the production is female led. It's a female uh, producers, female writer, director, shows the strength of females in it. So yeah, it's, it's very kind of, you know, um, right on for female. You know. It's great to see. And I guess in wrapping up, Angeline, um, it's been a long, long lockdown. We've held off this film from being released for a little bit. And I'm glad it is in cinemas because it's one of those films you will enjoy laughing with the person beside you, spilling the popcorn as you uh, are shocked at what goes on in this film and all the, the wonderfulness of being in the cinema for a film that uh, this film yeah. will bring. I wonder how have you survived lockdown and have you been to the cinema yourself uh, uh, yet? Um, I haven't been to the cinema yet. Uh, I think I'm relying a lot on Netflix and Amazon Prime, but um, I do. The thing that I've missed more will be theatre, um, to go to the theatre and just really enjoy that kind of experience. And I think as well, what it is, is it's people sharing an experience and that with the cinema as well. Um, I will be going to the cinema this Wednesday Good. for our premiere. Uh, but not only that, um, you know, I was even thinking, wouldn't it be great if people at the end of that, like that that song, De Logan, they just get up and start bopping in the aisles. I think they might. They might. Yeah, I think people now might be more inclined to shake off their inhibitions because we've been so kind of closeted with this pandemic. It's like, you know, life is too short. Come on, get out and enjoy it. And, you know, let your hair down a bit. <laughs> Well, I hope you let your hair down at the premiere, uh, Angeline Ball. Thank it's been you. A ball having a chat with you. Thank Look you so forward much. To uh, the world seeing the madness that is Deadly Cuts in cinemas. It doesn't get any more Dublin than Deadly Cuts, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm sure the world will too. Thank you for your time, Angeline Ball. Nice Thank you me. very much. Thank you. Deadly Cuts cannot win. Does you know this Dino fella? Any idea where he's gone? We've done the world a favour. You have a community relying on you. Oh.